Hello guys, welcome to Solving Solutions on Baron Channel. We are here solutions to all the solving problems. It's nine seven in class again today. How have you been? On today's tutorial, we are going to show you how to carry out the um, nearest neighbor analysis or neighborhood analysis in an ArcGIS Pro. Right now, this analysis is a special analysis technique used in GIS and then um, special statistics to examine the distribution and arrangement of um, features within a data set based on their proximity to one another, right? Now, based on their proximity to one another. Now, it focuses on understanding the special relationship between the features and can be applied in what in various um, types of data, right? Good. Um, the primary goal is to assess whether the observed spatial pattern is random, clustered, or what is passed, right? Good. So it's also valuable in um, various fields, just like ecology, criminology, urban planning, and the rest of that. So in um, RGS Pro, we are going to use these tools, the generate near table and then the XY to line um, to actually get the end product of what, what we want to achieve today. So we have um, the boundary of um, just south. And then we have some pulling unit points. And then we also have what, some places, right? Good. Now, one other thing is that um, the data sets that are being used here, the coordinate reference system are actually what projected, right? Good. So it can help us in the linear measures. So the first thing is for us to search for generate near table. Good. Now, what does it do? It calculates distance and other proximity information between features in one or more feature classes or layers, right? Good. Let me float it so that it will be easier. Now, the input feature is what the pulling unit. Then the near feature is what the places right good because we are moving from the pulling units towards the places right good and then um, adjs pro allows you to add more than one near feature right good now this is the output table that will be generated so if you don't um, like this name you can actually modify the name right to give it a name that um, you want alongside the directory right good. now the search radius if you want to give a figure, you can actually give a figure, and then the unit is actually what in meters, right? Good. Then we need to check this location. Now let's read the description. Now it's optional, but when you specify whether x, y coordinates of the input feature's location and nearest location of the nearest feature will be written from the what the will be written to the from x from y near x and near y field. Now this will help you. Or this will help us when we want to get the distance between our source point and what our target point, right? Good, which is what the input feature and the near feature, right? Good. So it's important that we keep it what checked, right? So these are the few parameters we are going to set under what the generate near table, and we can click on run. Good. So you see that it has been what the table has been completed right good it has been treated successfully so i can decide to dock this back now we have a standalone table if i try to open it up i can see what the attributes right good now from the attributes i can see the object id the feature id the near fid then the near distance now these fields are actually very important to us the distance, the from x, from y, the near x, and what's the near y, right? Good. Now, this near x, the from x, from y, near x, near y, as I have said earlier, will help us to join the lines, right? Good. That will help us to join the lines when we are in the next set of what, in the next aspect of what the tutorial, right? Good. Now, this near distance actually shows us the distance from maybe each respective pulling unit to the nearest, um, place of interest right good so the next thing is for us to join this table with what the pulling unit um, data set right good so let's close this up so we right click and then we come to join and relate and then we add join our input table is what the 
just pulling unit, which is rightly selected. Then the input join field is what we are going to use the FID as a primary field. Then the join table is actually what the table that is generated. And then the join table field. Let's use what the object I derived to. And then we can decide to validate our join. So a one-to-one -one join has matched 556 records, right? Good. So the input table has 557 and the join table has 557. So I think we are good to go. We can close this out. Good. So we have actually um, successfully joined what the standalone table with what the just pulling unit, right? Good. So if we open up the just pulling unit, the attribute table of the just pulling unit, rather, we are going to see that um, from around this point, because this was the initial content of the attribute table. However, due to the join, we now have what these other um, fields added to what this particular layer, right? Good. So we have the object ID, in FID, near FID, the near distance, the from X, from Y, the near X, and the near Y, right? Good. Now, this will now help us to proceed to the next aspect of the tutorial, which is now trying to create the lines between them, right? Good. So if we try to come back and then now search for X, Y to lines. Good. So it creates a feature class containing a geodetic or planar line feature from the values in a start X coordinate field, start Y coordinate field, end X coordinate field, and then end Y coordinate field of a table, right? Good. So let's open that up. I'll still decide to float this. Good. So now we are going to impute the parameters of this um, particular X to X, Y to line to, right? Good. So the impute table will be the just pulling unit. Remember, we are using that because um, in this particular layer, we have added what the standalone table that was actually created, right? Good. That contains those um, from X, from Y, so the near X, near Y, right? Good. So you now see there is a place for you to now impute what your start X and then a numerical field in the input table containing the X coordinates or longitude, right? Good, of the starting point. So if we use this drop down, we are going to see from X, right? Good. Similarly, the start Y, we are also going to see what from Y. Then the end X field, we are going to see near X, and then we are going to see what near Y, right? Good. So now we have actually populated what these um, parameters with the respective fields. We now scroll down the, the line type. We can decide to use the drop down to see the different line types we have, or perhaps we use the word the guide here to help us describe what each of them mean, right? Good. So we are going to use the default word geodesic, and then for the ID, let's use this for the spatial reference system. Remember, we said our data is in a projected CRS, which will enable us to calculate the distances since we are actually working with um, a linear measure, right? Good. So, and you've rightly seen that by default, the UTM zone 32 not was selected because that's actually what the spatial reference of the data set, right? Good. So we click on run. Good, so we can now see that there is what a new X, Y to line layer under the drawing order. So if we decide to dock this now, we are now going to see what the lines that are joining what the different pulling units to the nearest um, settlement, right? Good. So the idea is for you to know from each of these pulling units, how far is it or how far are they from each of these pulling units to the nearest settlement. So if we open this, get into the attributes table. Good. You are now going to see the from X, from Y, near X, near Y, which is actually very important. And now you are going to see what each of the what the 
destination in terms of the places, right? Because we are actually moving from the pooling units to see how far or how close they are to different places. And then we can see that from our table here, Buruku is actually having um, so much population, like um, so much destination from the pooling unit, which likely means that um, maybe most of the pooling units are situated around it. Okay, we now see do do is also do is also what actually populated. So these are some of the interpretations you can give towards the the results that you have, and then. Rightly, you can also see the shape length, which means the distance from each of the pooling units to the respective what um, places of interest, right? Good or maybe the respective community. If you try to plot this to see how much pooling units are actually linked to a particular community, right? Good. So you would um, appreciate um, how close or how frequent a particular community is linked to what different pooling units right so these are some insights that um, you can actually generate from from the data alongside the objective of of your project right so you can see as you zoom in this is actually a community and then these are pooling units that are what that are surrounding it and then each of these lines have what different distances to the community right good because i think the places are in red and the pooling units are in blue, right? Good. So thanks for coming to class. We hope we have shown you exhaustively how to carry out um, proximity analysis or nearest neighborhood analysis in um, RGS Pro. And we are going to see you on the next tutorial. Ensure you keep staying safe and have a very good time. Bye.